This is short. We are inbound on final approach. I say again, on final. Welcome to the New York State Police Exhibit. If I can draw your attention to the man standing on the roof in the middle of the tower, he is our host for this show. Sergeant Eric Ozzy Osborne. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to day 12 of the great New York State Fair. Appreciate you folks coming out to join us. I especially appreciate those of you that sat through that dog show for no other purposes than to get yourself prime seats for this. The best show at the exhibit guaranteed not to give you fleas. We are SORT. SORT is a tactical element for the New York State Police. As such, we conduct all those activities that you would expect a SWAT team to conduct. Iris felony warrants, drug raids, barricaded subjects, hostage situations, dignitary protection. However, we also perform a few tasks you would necessarily associate with a SWAT team, including search and rest rescue, more specifically, angle repelling and rope rescue, which is what we're going to demonstrate here today. Our team was originally formed in 1979 as a counter-terrorism unit in anticipation of the 1980 Winter Olympics in Lake Placid. At that time, we had three teams spread out across the state. It was a part-time detail. It was called the Mobile Response Team, or MRT. Since then, our team has undergone several evolutions. In 2008, changed our name to SORT, became a full-time detail, and added two teams. Those five teams spread out across the state are responsible for maintaining their own equipment, all the way from the large pieces, like that armored Lenko Bearcat on the grass, all the way down to our individual, individual pieces of equipment, like our harnesses. On the front of each guy's harness, you're going to notice a piece of equipment. This is the figure eight, or the eight. This is our descent device. The rope is fed through that. The top hand on that rope, that's just a guide hand. keeps us upright. The one down here by our hip, that's the money maker. That's our brake hand. As we push that away from our hip, it allows the rope to freely flow through the device. That's when we let gravity do its job, and we refer to that as letting her eat. We put it back towards our hip, puts friction on the device, slows, and eventually stops us. But telling you is one thing, showing you something different. So without further ado, let's bring the guys down and introduce them. Up on the left side of the tower from the South Central team, our cross-trained scuba diver, Trooper Calvin Baywatch Lee. In the center from North Central and our statewide communications expert, Super Cole, don't call me radio, Shula. And on the right side, also from North Central, Super Christopher, if you like dogs, it's time to let these puppies sweat Down here on the ropes, we've got the North Central Assistant Team Leader, Sergeant Ryan Stitt Ordway. And then Top Window spinning out deep, fresh off his European tour, where he played clubs from a lot to this. Or the DJ, Super Matt, the Corn Dog Hornets. And last but certainly, certainly not least, from North Central, Super Matt, the Laser Laser. Oh, no, 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 no. Hold up, hold up. 
Those of you that are veterans of this show know we usually set them down in pairs. However, in this instance, the cheese stands alone for a reason. Matt has uh, volunteered to help me with the demonstration. Like I said, we use that backhand, we go ahead and feather that break and land ever so gently. However, as the fair progresses, guys like to entertain and occupy themselves up there. So they're going to get that hand a little further away from their hip than they should. Maybe open it a little wider than they should. And if you're really letting her eat, and you come across one of the loops or twists that can develop in this rope, and it hits that hand, that rope can pop out of your hand. You lose your brakes on a throughway, that's a bad day on the road, right? Matt loses his brakes up there, that's a bad day on the ropes. But that's what brings me to Sergeant Ordway here. He's not trying to be rude or antisocial, showing his back. He's not trying to showcase his well-defined lats and traps. I'm gonna hit the infirmary and get you a band-aid, brother, because you're cut. <laughs> Good enough. Good enough response. I'm keeping it. As our most proficient and most experienced operator on the ropes, he has the oh-so-important yet not at all glamorous job of rope safety or belayment. One of those guys loses their brake hand coming down, he's gonna pull on that rope, putting friction on their device, slowing, and hopefully stopping them. But again, tell you is one thing showing you something different. So Matt's gonna do me a favor. He's gonna take a couple steps back, he's gonna get a running start, and he's gonna throw himself off that roof with no hands on the rope. He's gonna flying squirrel it, hurtling towards earth at an incredible rate of speed, accelerating at 9.8 meters per second per second, until at the very last moment, Sergeant Ordway, if he is physically able and so inclined, who we'll uses raw power and cat-like reflexes to engage the belay, stopping that mere moments from certain death, or at least a sprained ankle. Ladies and gentlemen, you paid for your whole seat. You're only gonna need the edge. This part's gonna be awesome. All right, you ready, brother? You loose? All right, from three, ready? Three, two, two one. one, jump! <laughs> What's the matter? Josh! Ryan, right, what are you doing, bud? <laughs> you said it's going to be awesome, Flying Squirrel. Uh, flying Squirrel going to be awesome. Yeah, but you're involved. You have an no, active you said, role. No, there, stand down there, just pretend I'm doing something. I know, but you're, yes, you are pretending. <laughs> All right, folks, hold on. Just give me a second here. I apologize. Hey, guys, how you doing? Good. Hey, bud, what's your name? Raymond. Raymond. All right, Raymond. Did, did he tell you what to do? No, he did. All right, don't worry about it. Raymond, what's your belay success rate? Don't sweat it. Don't sweat it. After today, it's going to be zero or 100. Raymond's going to establish his belay success rate today. This is exciting. So he's going to hold on. All you're going to do is pull that rope when Matt jumps. Okay? Real easy. Yeah, like on the first bounce or the second bounce. No big deal. He's going to stop eventually. You know what I'm saying? All right. Matt, Raymond looks, he looks locked in. He's got back up here. I think we're ready to... <laughs> As police officers, we're trained to pick up on body language, and that is not promising. Matt, oh, you heard that? I thought I told you to ear muff it when the adults are talking. All right, all right, all right. What do we, what do we got to do to get you down here? Maybe Sergeant Ordway does the one job he has? What do you think, Brian? Forgot about yesterday. Yeah, he did forget about yesterday. That trauma will do that. All right, so we'll get Ryan on the front of the rope. We're going to have Raymond back here. He's backing him up. What do you say now? We think we could. We have two control measures in play. A, a tertiary control measure. This is the Mary Poppins technique, we call it. All right, you good now? Folks, let's give a little bit of encouragement, all right? Let's count them down from three. You ready? Three, two, one. Outstanding job. Those of you that are veterans of this show, know we try to get them a little closer every time. Come back tomorrow, it'll be three inches shorter covered in grass stains. <laughs> and Raymond, for keeping our guy from burning in, I appreciate it. We've got one New York State Police Trooper there, courtesy of the NYST PBA tent right over there, available for merchants and club. Nice job on the boy. Folks, as you saw, how Matt ended up there, it's very easy to end up twisted up or in a precarious predicament up there. Gravity does not take an instant off. However, if you do get twisted up in a bad spot, as long as you keep your head, as long as you keep your cool, and most importantly, as long as you keep your brake hand, you're going to be okay. 
So if you look all the way up top, we've got Kale and Cole who are going to come on down and demonstrate. All right, you saw them come down to that same standard seated hip propel that everyone else has used. And now they're going to transition to break hand from their strong side to their support side. This is going to allow them to go ahead and invert. So now even though they're upside down, as long as they maintain that newfound break hand, they're not going to smash face first in this beautifully manicured turf. This is called a commando crawl. It allows our guys to see where they're going before they present their feet or other body parts through a window. But once they've gone far enough and seen all they need to see, they can go ahead and revert, reassume that break hand, and come on down. Complete with a superhero landing, ladies and gentlemen, the invert. As a side note, we did recruit these guys in the team directly from the Synchronized Swimming Academy. You see, all those hours in the pool have really paid off. We're going to pick up on an overarching theme down here today, folks, and that's safety. We're dealing with heights, we're dealing with extreme angles, we're dealing with hard and sharp edges. It's inherently dangerous. If somebody is rappelling, rock climbing, or even hiking, they could become injured or stranded in a position where they can neither go up nor down. We have to have the means to get to and rescue those people. Ladders aren't necessarily going to reach high enough, and helicopters can be counterproductive. Those rotors don't do our ropes any favors, if you know what I mean. So if you look on the roof, we've got Matt, who's going to start our demonstration. Same match working his way down a sheer cliff face in the Adirondack Park, or perhaps Ithaca, because it is gorgeous. He gets to a spot he wants to be for a little while. He's going to take that rope and wrap it around his eight. Not once, not twice, but thrice. This is called the tie-off. Once Matt's tied off, he can go hands-free. He can invert. He can literally and figuratively hang out. Very comfy. He can take a selfie, post it to his MySpace page. Anyone want to still run a MySpace? No? Just me, Matt? On oh, Trooper Bender, good for him. He is an older fella. Nice. All right. So Matt's hanging out there enjoying his day, but maybe a rock kicks loose and hits him in the head. At this point, I'm going to need some kids to volunteer to help. Yeah, don't worry about raising your hand, guys. School hasn't started yet. Don't be that orderly. Come on forward. Come on forward, guys. You see that rope that's there for your safety? Ignore it. Come directly past that. All right. You're each going to grab one water balloon, close with and destroy, okay? I don't know if we're going to have enough for everybody. In fact, I know we're going to run out. Please don't cry. It breaks my heart. If you have a water balloon, close with them, and we're looking for headshots, all right? Get as close as possible. I'm fairly confident that his tie-off's good. I think we're out, guys. Sorry, guys. All right. Anybody that's got one, let him have it. Let him have it. Oh, there's the barrage. They're bouncing these faulty water balloons. Almost. All right, folks, let's hear it for our rocks. Uh oh, someone got antlers out here. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Hey, Ryan, next year, lawn darts. More kinetic energy, more accuracy. All right, so Matt's been knocked out in this scenario, but we can't leave him up there. We got a lot of time and money invested in him, and me and Mark Bender need to be able to talk to someone on MySpace. So if you look all the way up top, we've got Chris, the big Sam and Swinton. Chris is going to work his way down his line. He's going to latch hands on the mat, and he's going to hopefully bring the both down to safety. Come on down, Chris. Can't keep my hands to myself. Oh. Uh -huh. All right. We choose all our own music out here for full of choice, but Chris obviously comfortable in his own skin. There's that body language, you guys. What's the matter, bro? There's no way you're coming down to this. This is not your selection. It might be his. He seems to enjoy it. DJ Corndog messing with you a little? A little bit. All right. DJ Corndog, he needs something. He needs something different to motivate him to come down. What do you got for him? Oh, here we go. This cross, kid. That's motivated him. Once Chris L's out and comes down, you're going to notice he's got a different piece of equipment down the front of his harness. He's no longer running an eight. He's running what's called a break bar rack. That break bar rack is going to allow him to take additional weight onto his system. That additional weight, in this case, is going to be mapped. 
shift out slightly above him and he performs a tie off so he can go hands free. Then he's going to reach for that blue pickoff strap on his left hip. He'll use a partial inversion and his impressive wingspan. Thank you, Vanna. To hook into Matt's harness. Once Chris is locked into Matt's harness, he uses those bulging biceps that he somehow shoehorns into an extra medium feature. Large? Not in the men's section, it's not. You can see how Matt instinctively reaches for Chris's hips and legs. For a very close knit team, at this point we ask no photos be taken. Thank you. You see how Matt's line has gone slack. That's an indication his weight has been removed from the line. Now Chris is freeing him from his rope and he's securing all the hardware so it doesn't fall and injure anybody below. Now Chris will undo his tie off and hopefully lower them both safely to the ground. Looks like he nailed it. Ladies and gentlemen, the safety measures we have in place, we've gone over a very small percentage of the rescue work that we are capable of. However, there is also a tactical application to the rope work we're demonstrating here today. Say, for example, if there are a bad guy creeping around these fairgrounds, he snatches up a kid, runs up into that building and barricades the door shut. Horrible choice of location on his part, but I digress. He's got that door nailed shut, he feels real confident we're not going to be able to breach it. But unfortunately for that bad guy, the special operations response team doesn't need to come through the door. We can come in through the window. But before we do, we count on all our other partners on the job. The men and women that you see around this, this state fair with the gray uniform and the Stetsons, those are the road troopers. That is the most important and dangerous job in division. They show up at these chaotic scenes oftentimes by themselves. They lock them down, they get people to safety. Then they call on their supervisors, investigators, negotiators, and all our partners in special operations to include the canine and aviation units. On these scenes, we all work together as a team, and that allows us to do our specialty. So if you look all the way up top, we've got Calvin, who's ready to run the recon. Calvin's careful to land gently on that roof, he switches brake hands and transitions into a commando crawl. Now he's going to start looking in those windows. He's trying to find the suspect and hostage. Checking that top window. Uh-oh. Somebody didn't care for that. Oh, that young lady's not happy at all. You see it. It's not... Oh, seems to be having a change of heart on this one. Amorous and aggressive. Oh, no. Swipe left, brother. Now that Cal's out of real danger, he sees down that bottom window. He's confirming our suspect and hostage are down there. Now Cal reaches up on the side of his harness for that canister. That's a noise flash diversion device commonly referred to as a flashback. That's going to emit a bright light and loud noise. It distracts and disorients the suspect while we seize the initiative. Looks like Cal's ready with the bang, and it looks like we're ready for Cole to effect the rescue. Falls in the window. The suspect. Oh, pile driver into the people's elbow. And now what? Here it comes. The suplex. Oh my goodness. That guy is in custody. Wow. How's Timmy though, bud? How's the kid? Timmy, the reason you got in there? How's he doing? He's okay. All right. Let's hear for Cole. Another save for Cole. He's 32 and 0. He's a real hero. Just ask him. Folks, hopefully you've had a good time hanging out with us here today. Hopefully you can tell we have a good time out here. We love working on this awesome tower, interacting with you good people. The State Fair represents a real nice break for all of us. However, at the end of the day, it is a serious business we're involved in. If you look along that roof line, we have four sets of numbers. Those are the shield numbers for troopers Michael Streich, Ross Riley, David Brinkerhoff, and Joseph Longobardo. Those four men were operators on our team who died in the line of duty. They made the ultimate sacrifice serving the people of the state of New York, and we think it's those guys that deserve a real round of applause this afternoon. You guys have been a fantastic crowd. We appreciate you coming out, joining us. 
Feel free to come forward after the show. We'll answer questions, pose for pictures, tasteful, of course. We might have some stickers for the kids. I'll see what we can come up with. Make sure to hit up the museum and the interactive displays, both very interesting and air-conditioned. And the Trooper Foundation and NYST PBA stores have all your state police swag. Again, thanks for coming out, guys, and enjoy the rest of your day at the great New York State Fair.